Hello YouTube, it is Atticus coming at you from just finishing Game of Thrones, the uh, final episode. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my Game of Thrones retrospective review of Season 8 Part 1. It is out right now, and I am working on Part 2, so yeah, I'll try to have it up here within the week. So yeah, with that being said, guys, I am bringing you a really cool Dark Elf game. And this is against a guy called Stuff Cripson, I do believe. Uh, top, I think he said he was like 120, rank 120. We played like five different games. Um, I won one, and he won like three, so he's a really good opponent. Um... This was the one of the ones... Well, I won't spoil it for you. We'll just go ahead and jump into the builds, guys. So, uh, yeah, you can see he's playing the Empire, and I'm playing the Druki. For my Lord choice, I brought Marathi. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've said it before. She is the best Lord in the game, period. Um, she, for her spell loadout, guys, I am going to have uh, Miasma, uh, Pit of Shades, and then, I, of course, I have Soul Stealer in all her buffs. So I have Chaining Beauty and the Heartrender Sword. So I'm going to get that minus 18 melee attack. Um, I figured bringing the Empire, or since I was fighting the Empire, he would take an Air Lord. So I brought myself a little bit of protection for Marathi. You can see I have a Feral Manticore and I have a unit of Harpies. So, yeah, if he brought a Carl France or a Boris, I'd have a pretty powerful Goon Squad. Because Marathi, she's anti-large, she's armor-piercing. She could fight pretty good. I mean, you put her one-on-one -on -one against Carl, she's going to do okay. Now, she doesn't have the armor of him, but she can heal. And, uh, yeah, she's also going to be de debuffing him. But still, she would lose uh, just one-on-one. -on -one. Also, you can see over here, I have another Harpy, and I have the Raven Herald. So, yeah, these guys are going to be trying to snipe any uh, Demi Griffs and things like that. So, that's my Air Force. Pretty powerful Air Force. For my front line, guys, we have three Dread Spears, and these are pretty standard, just to kind of keep me from getting Cycle Charged from Knights of the Blazing Sun and uh, uh, Empire Knights, because a really good um, strategy with the Empire is to have your infantry line, um, you know, crash against your opponents, and then have Cav come from behind. Try to get, like, a you know, a, um, a charge, and it kind of just blocks up up and messes up your units um here in my secondary line i have some black Heart corsairs so yeah these guys with their anti-infantry boners are going to be doing the majority of my killing you can see i also have a unit of shades so yeah these guys are going to be in the theme of that lord sniping I have my really powerful air force and the shades will hopefully be like the wild card that could kind of get some kills in you can see we also have the knights of the ebon claw guys so we're going really powerful uh these guys are, i mean i call them the can openers if you watch my dark elf guide you know that they have a lot of different uses you can use them uh, anti-cab you can use them against great swords you can use them pretty much against anything they're so powerful that yeah there's really not a bad matchup for them and yeah i think that's pretty much everything for my army here guys um we do have a bolt thrower too so yeah just a little bit more pressure the reason you bring a bolt thrower against the empire is to try to uh, snipe his cab or excuse me his artillery so if he had like a cannon or something like that yeah the bolt thrower could pretty much wipe it out so uh, for stuff crimson here for his build he did bring carl france i did believe where is he at so we do have a Jade Wizard, but where is this Lord at? Am I going blind? Oh, there he is. So, uh, no, I take it back. We have the Arch Lector, so... Um, must be getting my games mixed up. So yeah, the Arch Lector is going to be a really cool... You don't really see him a lot. But for his abilities, he did take the one that gives the uh, melee attack, the damage reduction. And uh, yeah, I think that's all he took. So he didn't take the area of effect bombardment spell, it looks like. So he was probably trying to cut cost. So we have him. We have an Arch wi or a Jade Wizard who, for his spell loadout, will have uh, Stone Flesh and Earth Blood. So yeah, pretty cool loadout there. I have a front line of Spears here. Um, secondary line of Flagellants, it looks like he has one unit in total, plus he has the Sigmar Sun, so he has his unbreakable units here in the middle, and what I was talking about guys, you have the Empire Knights here in the middle to support your uh, infantry, so yeah, once these guys can fly, these guys can come through the middle and get a charge in, um, also has some great swords here, looks like he has maybe one unit of those, uh, we have the Silver Bolts, so yeah, these guys are hidden, I'm not gonna see them, uh, excuse me, some more Spearmen, uh, yeah, so a little bit of everything, I mean, you'll, you notice this when you're fighting like pros, and um, they have a lot of diversity in their builds. Um, the Royal Altdorf Gr Griffite. So, yeah, luckily I have the Raven Heralds, which should deal with those guys. Uh, and then we also have some other Demigriffs, I do believe. Yep, over here. So, really powerful build. And you can see we also have a unit of Outriders right here with the armor piercing. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, get into it. So, right off the bat, as Jon Snow said to Arya... Uh, yeah, we'll just let that one slide. Oh, we have two Outriders. We're just going to start moving up. So, yeah, we have the Artillery Advantage, but my opponent has some Skirmishers. So, we're just going to try to close the distance as quickly as possible. You can see that the uh, Royal Altar Griffites are going to start to try to come around. 
But we don't really have any cabinet. But here, here comes that initial charge I was talking to you guys about. That Empire Knight's right through the center. It does a lot of early damage. It just helps your infantry uh, win that much quicker. You can see that the shades are getting a little bit of damage in. But yeah, I'm going to have to send my Ebony Knights, uh, Knights of the Ebon Claw, to try to uh, patch up that hole. You can see I'm using these Harpies right here to just screen out those Outriders. And yeah, the Pegasus Knights here are going to start shooting at, or excuse me, the Raven Heralds are going to start shooting at the uh, Demigriffs. You can see I'm going to land my... Uh, uh, my Feral Manticore onto his Silver Bullets, and I'm going to get an overcasted Pit of Shades right onto these Demigriffs and these Spears. They were all grouped up, so I figured, alright, let's sabotage my units. And you can see, I route three of his units pretty much, so that's really good value. You can see Marathi has landed in, so yeah, she's going to be giving that debuff. And yeah, look at that, guys. Their melee attack is only at, what, 28? So, yeah, I'll take it. I'm here in the back. The Arch Lector is fighting amongst these Empire Knights. He's doing the... Go slow it down for a second. He's doing the uh, Grand Hammer, giving the melee attack, and I am going to get a Soul Stealer though. So I figured, all right, I'm going to overcast it. It's going to affect some of his units and the uh, Radius here, and things are going to look very good for us. You can see we have the Shades here providing some Overwatch. Knights of the Ebon Claw will absolutely shred through the Empire Knights, and yeah, um, here on the back line, the Harpies and the Manticore are shutting down the Silver Bullets. He does have some Spear units that are trying to come support, but yeah, over here we have Spearmen and Corsairs who are going to chew through these guys pretty quickly, and you. Can see that the Outriders and the Demigriffs are here. The uh, Royal Altar Griffites are just getting really just um, focused by these Raven Heralds. So they're not getting a lot of value of them. And you can see the balance of power is pretty strongly in my favor. <coughs> Gets these Spearmen. These Corsairs are going to just crush through them. Even though my opponent does have these great swords right here who will beat my Dread Spears. Um, yeah, we are going to break his cab now, and we're going to be able to surround the Arch Lector with the Knights of the Ebon Claw. And yeah, guys, you can see the Marathi here is just fighting amongst these troops. They're not going to really pose that much of a threat to her. She's still at pretty high health. Um, over here, we have some Spearmen fighting these Flagellants, and it's pretty much just a wet, uh, wet noodle battle. A um, couple of troops coming back from routing, guys. You can see my opponent does get into my shades, which is a little bit unfortunate. I am going to get a Miasma off. I was trying to slow down the charge. But yeah, you can see the Raven Heralds are just providing that overwatch, guys. Wherever they go, they're just doing damage. And you can see they're just starting to melt down these guys. And that's a lot. It's like 1,800 gold that's just pretty much being wasted. You can see we have shut down uh, the uh, Silver Bullets. And yeah, we have some Harpies that have freed up. And Balance of Power Rides really strongly in my favor. I have a really good lead. You can see Marathi is going to be able to break the center pocket right here, which is going to free up some troops. And you can see I'm using the Manticore to shut down the uh, Jade Wizards. So yeah, I feel like a Manticore is a really good catch or a good uh, answer to Wizards. A few hits from him and you'll have him pretty much just wiped out. You can see the Knights of the Ebon Claw and the uh, Shades are going to be able to break uh, his remaining units. And he's just going to tap out and say GG. So good game to my opponents. Go ahead and look at the end screen breakdown and talk about some of the keys for my success. And uh, yeah, I mean, this game was, there was a lot of things happening all at once. I say the big key to my success, I think, would have to be uh, the backline pressure, shutting down his... Um, his silver bullets, uh, you know, keeping his range units from hitting me with the harpies and shutting down the outriders. I mean, harpies are such a good counter to pretty much anything Empire could bring that could shoot. We, sh we, we shut down these guys. We kept these guys from shooting. And yeah, he had no range at Overwatch. Uh, the Knights of the Ebon Claw kept the center pocket from getting overran by these Empire Knights. The Raven Heralds were able to screen out his Demigriffs. And yeah, the uh, Black Oak Corsairs were perfect for dealing with his shaft units. So pretty, it was the synergy of everything I brought. Um, and of course, Marathi. With all her debuffs going in there and just weaken them. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a quick one. So, we're going to go ahead and do a second game. Uh, this is with the same guy, Stuff Crimson. So, uh, we'll go ahead and do... So, yeah, me and Stuff Crimson switched it around. So, he went to do Dark Elves and I went to Beastmen. And he said he's a Dark Elf Empire main. So, yeah, we're going to see how this goes. Storm Demon. And this is a really cool map for any of you guys who haven't seen it. It's when the meteors are all falling. And we should be loading. I wish I knew how to do editing where I could just cut ahead of these, you know, these things here. All right, so we're in the game here. Let's go ahead and slow it down and look at the build. So, uh, for my Lord Choice, um, Beastman, I'm taking Morgor, the Shadow Grave. So, pretty much, I'm just taking him for his uh, Chaos Spawn uh, summons. I mean, in the Dark Elf matchup, you don't really have that good of Lords. Like, uh, I, I, f I find that Kazarak just gets pretty much owned by all the armor piercing range. And then the other guy, who, uh, what's his name? The one who, who's the caster? I don't know. I just feel like Morgor is the safest pick. You can see that I do have a couple units of uh, Ungor. 
four raiders here in the front. They're going to be trying to screen away these uh, dark riders. We have a secondary line of gore herds. We have four of them in total, but we have them all the way up to full gold chevron. And yeah, that's going to hopefully keep these guys in the battle a lot longer. Secondary line, we have some chaos spawn. And yeah, the beastmen chaos spawn guys actually have poison, so you got to keep that in mind. That's going to be a pretty good buff to have. Uh, so yeah, we have two units of them. Then we have more gore, then we have his bodyguard. We have the uh, man rippers right here. So these guys are going to be coming really good handy dealing with all these cold ones that my opponent brought because my cavalry is pretty pathetic as the beastman you cannot go toe to toe with anything that the uh, dark elves have cav wise you see we also have some throwing axes and these guys have a sole mission of just shutting down these cold one knights and uh yeah we also have the regiment of renown uh sons of uh what are they called goros and these guys uh, what makes them cool is they have um Let's see if I let me do it. They have the guardian trait for your lord, but I mean, it doesn't really help you if your lord's not very mobile. And they also have, uh, I think it's uh, Fury, is that what it is? Or the uh, Frenzy? So, yeah, they're a little bit more powerful, but they have no armor and they just take so much damage. So, yeah, the, the idea behind this build, guys, is to screen out his Dark Riders. Hopefully, my Gore Hordes with their sh Gold Chevrons can beat through his units. And then we'll use the. Um, Poison of the Chaos Spawn to, you know, tip them over the edge. So for my opponent here, he does have two units of um, Black Arc, or, oh, excuse me, the uh, Dark Riders of Repeater Crossbows. So one over here, one right here. Secondary line, he has some Hambows, which is a really good pick in this matchup, just since Beastmen don't have a lot of armor. Um, secondary, third line of uh, Dread Spears, we have, looks like, four of them in total. And then we have some... Uh, Harkonnet Fishicutioners, we have a unit of Shades, we have some Cold One Dread Knights, so yeah, these are not the anti-large ones, these are just the powerful melee focused ones that will be really good against like Best of Gores. Uh, one unit of uh, Cold One Knights over here, secondary one over here, and then we have a Caster, or is it just a Lord... Let's see here. Yeah, we have a Supreme Sorcerers of Shadow on a horse, so mobile. Yeah, a Feebling Foe, the Pendulum, and Miasma as his spell loadout. So, all right, guys, this is going to be an interesting one. So let's go ahead and start it. So right off the bat, as the Beastman's arrow said to the face of these uh, Dark Riders, they are just going to say deuces and run away. Um, I do have an range advantage with the Ungor Raiders. You can see we our range is 115. Their range is, oh, is it the same? Oh, well, I take that back. So I guess we do have the same range. I guess I was thinking of like the high elves with their 180 range. But yeah, you know, I mean, my guys are a lot cheaper. So if he wants to take that trade, it's going to be a lot more valuable for me. Um, so yeah, we just have a little bit of distance to traverse here. There's nothing really, really we could do. You can see I'm going to have some of my uh, Sons of the Goros come chasing those guys. I figured I'd take a volley in the face if it allowed me to open up with my uh, Ungor Raiders. But yeah, we took a lot of damage, and it turned out not to be really worth it. You see how Miasma is going to be hit on those guys. And I always feel disappointed with these guys. I feel like I never get my money's worth when I do bring them. Um, so yeah, we have this long distance to traverse. Now these guys right here, these Hambos, are going to be a really big threat to my army. They're really powerful. Um, you can't really shoot them down with your Ungor Raiders since they have 80 armor and you're never going to be able to catch them so you have to really use Synagores and uh, things like that and you can see there comes a couple of volleys shooting into the back but yeah like I said 80 armor and these guys have Abyssal armor piercing it's just going to really be tick on these guys and we're going to be wasting ammunition um, you can see that we are starting to shoot into these ones as well. I'm just trying to screen them away, but yeah, every volley into the face of these guys, they have no shield chance, they have like 15 armor, and it's, yeah, that's exactly what we want not to happen, uh, since these guys are not meant to be taking volleys of arrows to the face. So here comes the, uh, Harkonnet Fishicutioners and the Gore Herds. We're gonna have a nice, uh, charge here. And um, the Harkonnet Fishicutioners will beat those guys pretty soundly, just because of their armor. You see the Cold One Dread Knights are gonna come in the middle as well. And yeah, it's not looking too good for us, but you see we do have this secondary line right here. And once these uh, Chaos Spawns get in, it's going to balance out a little bit better. You can see that uh, slowly and surely the Man Rippers are trying to catch up with the army, but yeah, my forces are just so slow. You can see that I do have some Hogs here that get into these uh, Cold One Knights, and yeah, we're going to lose that, unfortunately. You can see that we're going to Rampage. And yeah, they do have Armor Piercing, but my opponent has Anti-Large. So we are going to get off my Leadership thing, the Call of Violence. It's just going to keep these guys in the fight a little bit longer. And yeah, we're just trying our best to uh, work with what we got. And you can see that the uh, KS spawn are fighting amongst these Harkonnet Fishicutioners, and they are going to do pretty strongly. Same with over here. You can see the Ungord Raiders are going to take a charge in the face by these Dark Riders, but hey, we're keeping those guys busy, busy with a cheaper unit. I'm okay with that. You can see that leadership is the big problem, guys. We're just breaking all across the map here. It's always what happens. But we're getting some throwing axe damage into the back of these uh, Cold One Knights, so at least we're doing a little bit of something. But yeah, you can see that our front line is colliding. We're going to start losing our Ungors here. And yeah, Murderous Master and prowess is going to proc for my opponent now we are looking pretty strong in the center here you can see that we have beat his dread spears but my opponent's going to get a devastating pendulum right here and yeah that's going to take a unit down to about half health 
Um, and Man Rippers are my real MVPs. I need these guys to stay alive because they're the only answer I have to all his uh, Cold One Knights and his cavalry. And you see these guys with their big armor, uh, anti-large armor-piercing attacks. They're going to be able to screen those guys away pretty quickly and send them uh, running for the hills. Over here, you can see I got some uh, Chaos Spawns. These are the summon ones that are getting into those shades. So yeah, that's some really good value for us as well. And over here, the uh, throwing axes are just throwing into these guys. Doing a little bit of damage to them, but they do have a shielded chance. Uh, Balance of Power is still smack dab in the middle, guys. So it is really anybody's game still. Um, you can see that we're into his Hambos. Really cool to be able to shut those guys down. And you can see I'm using these Ungor Raiders to just keep these guys from firing. I don't want them hitting my Man Rippers. At this point, the Man Rippers, like I said, are the only thing that's really keeping me alive. You can see these Ungor Herds are doing really good. I mean, these Gore Herds are doing really good against Shred Spears. I mean, especially with all these Gold Chevrons, they're going to be able to absolutely just shred through those guys. Hargan Executioners are being hit by the Chaos Spawn, so it's looking kind of good. You can see here in the center and right pocket, we're looking pretty strongly. Over here, though, we're totally surrounded. You see these uh, Cold One Dread Knights have been a real nuisance to my army. Um, we are starting to take him down, though, with the, the uh, Throwing Axes. I wish I'd have brought maybe two or three of those units, because you can see we've pretty much just wiped this unit um, completely. Balance of Power, guys, is still smack dab in the middle, and you can see we're wearing down his Cold One Knights, so I'm starting to think, all right, maybe I do have a chance. And you can see they're getting hit into the back. They have high armor, but you know, it's doing a little bit of damage, and you can see we are going to get the Supreme Sorceress caught out of position, so yeah, she's a sitting duck, and she's taking a lot of damage. She's getting poisoned, and if we could keep her trapped, that would cause some leadership issues for my opponent. You can see that these Cold One uh, Dread Knights are fighting amongst the Chaos Spawn, but I don't have any infantry really alive. I have these uh, Gore Herd of like 17 units. I'm using the throwing axe to him in the back, but yeah, this is really what the uh, the battle's going to come down to. We really need to win this center pocket. You can see we have these Ungor Raiders providing a little bit of overwatch. The Chaos Spawns are um, poisoning them, but yeah, we need to get these units here into the fight as well. You can see these Ungor Raiders are coming to support. Same with these Spear units that would come in handy against these... Uh, um, Cold One Dread Knights, but yeah, these guys are just refusing to die. You can see Morgor is doing pretty good. He is fighting. He has like 400 weapon strength. He does poison as well. But yeah, these Hargan Executioners have such good leadership. They're not going to be breaking any time quickly. Um, over here, the Cold One Dread Knights are finally breaking, guys. So I'm thinking, okay, we can maybe do this. Especially if the Ungor is shooting into the Supreme Sorceress, who doesn't have any armor. So pretty much any damage that she takes, um, you know, she's got, or she gets hit with, she's going to take. So, I mean, it really is coming down to anybody, guys. This is a really close battle. You can see he has a lot of this AP range units that are, that are shooting into my units as well. Um, since I don't have a lot of armor, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so at this point, guys, I'm thinking, alright, maybe we have a chance at this. You can see we're starting to break these Harkonnen Executioners. We're starting to break his uh, Dread Spears. And we still have a pretty healthy uh, you know, amount of units. You can see I'm going to get a Defeebling Foe um, cast on my Centigores by my opponent. And I'm just trying to cycle charge these guys and uh, yeah, keep them alive. These Shades, though, are doing so much damage. You know, I don't have an answer to them. I am trying to screen them away with these Ungors, and yeah, we're going to be able to catch a couple of them out of position, but he's just going to collide. He's going to send everything he has, and these guys are getting debuffed, unfortunately, so... There's not really much I can do about it. And you can see that Morgor is fighting alone right now. I don't have any more infantry. So, yeah, he's really kind of uh, in some deep trouble. And you can see the leadership just keeps crumbling all around my troops. I mean, that's the problem with Beastmen. They just have slow leadership. You can see I do have some Man Rippers, but they're like a football field away. I really need these guys, like, ASAP. You can see we're trying to do some damage with my Synagores and to the Supreme Sorcerers. And she's taken. She's about half health. But, yeah, these guys, um, unfortunately, are the Throwing X variant. So, they're not going to be doing as much damage as I would have liked um, but yeah balance of power guys is looking really starting to fade and starting to go into my opponent's favor and it's going to be army losses and a win for my opponent so really close game really close game good game to him let's go ahead and look at the end screen breakdown and we'll talk about why i think my opponent won and uh yeah i mean it was the cav advantage that is how you beat the beastmen um I tried to make up the difference with the Chaos Spawn. I was hoping these throwing axes would be able to pick up the slack, but I feel, I wish I would have had maybe two of these units. Two of these units would have screened out these two Cold One Knights, and I feel like we could have maybe you know won the other ones. And maybe if I could have uh, brought maybe uh, cut these guys right here since they were pretty much worthless the whole game, and brought some more Spear units or some more Ungor Raiders, uh, maybe a Gorbul or something like that. But, um, yeah, Stuff Cripson, really good game. Um, your build was really cool. So, all right, guys, that's two games from me and Stuff Cripson. I hope you enjoyed that. It's Atticus. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.